Diesel engines might not be the first thing you think of when you hear the term low emissions, but Audi is on a mission to change that and keep the internal combustion engine alive a little bit longer. Audi has approved some of their V6 diesel engines to run on vegetable oil. Not diesel, not petrol, vegetable oil. It's a biofuel called hydro-treated vegetable oil and they reckon it will result in a 70 to 95% reduction in CO2 emissions. It almost sounds too good to be true. So what is HVO? Why is it so good? And is it the future for diesels? Let's get into it. It's worth noting that people have been running old diesel engines on waste vegetable oil for quite some time now. You can trawl through all the different forum threads from people asking if they can run their old car on old chip fat. It just makes sense. Who wouldn't want a renewable fuel that's cheaper than the stuff you get from the pump? You could use the cooking oil from last night's dinner to get you to work. In theory, any diesel will be able to use vegetable oil. After all, the inventor of the diesel engine, Rudolf Diesel, actually ran his early engines on peanut oil. But unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. Diesel is quite different to petrol. It's heavier, less refined, less volatile, and its vapor is less combustible. Regular vegetable oil that you can get from the supermarket is much thicker than regular diesel. So some cars will need a parallel fuel system that can heat the oil in order to thin it down in colder temperatures. Older diesels that have less refined fuel injection systems can handle using vegetable oil a lot easier but many modern systems won't take it well without modification. It also contains more glycerin and absorbs more water, which you can imagine doesn't do much good in a car's fuel system. People that use waste vegetable oil usually have to remove any water and filter it properly before it's used. Also, you'd think using an off-the-shelf vegetable oil as fuel might be illegal, as you're not paying the same taxes or duties that are included at the pump. However, in the UK at least, it's completely legal and there's nothing else to pay as long as you're using less than two and a half thousand litres a year, because you're going to tell them that of course. So it's definitely doable, it just might not have the same longevity as a fuel which is designed for the job and of course you need to do your research. So back to Audi's use of HVO. Audi's use of HVO isn't quite the same as just filling your car up with plain old vegetable oil. It's a renewable biodiesel which is made up of waste cooking oil and agricultural residue sounds a bit disgusting. The hydro-treated part in the name refers to the process where the oil reacts with hydrogen. They will then either break it down into hydrocarbons or add more hydrogen. It's all a little bit complicated, but the result is a renewable fuel that can be mixed with diesel or used all on its own. It's a slightly more refined and complex process compared to a regular biodiesel, which normally uses a combination of soybean oil, animal fats and recycled cooking oil to make a renewable diesel replacement. Because of that hydro treatment process, HVO is deemed to be the cleanest biodiesel of them all. Diesel engines running on regular fuel can really struggle when the temperature drops below zero. They rely on heat for the combustion process, so they use a set of glow plugs to heat up the combustion chamber. A huge positive for HVO is that it's considerably better in cold conditions. This is rated with something called a CFPP rating. The cold filter plugging point is the lowest temperature a particular amount of fuel can pass through a filter in 60 seconds. Regular diesel is rated at about minus 15 degrees, but HVO is rated up to an incredible minus 50. It also has a much better cetane rating than regular diesel. This is essentially the equivalent to an octane rating for petrol and refers to how clean the fuel burns. HVO manages to burn 30% cleaner than regular diesel. Audi has said that it will be compatible with its V6 TDI engines built from February and March 2022, with models ranging from the A4 all the way up to the A8 and Q8. A lot of its newer four-cylinder diesel engines were already approved back in 2021. The VAG group has a thing for sharing chassis and engines across multiple manufacturers. This fuel has also been approved for use in the V6 diesel Volkswagen Touareg. Audi have specified that it will only be usable on cars with power rated at a maximum of 282 horsepower. So it'll be interesting to know why they don't think it's suitable for more powerful diesels like the S6 and the S7. It all sounds like positive news for the diesel combustion engine. However, as with anything that sounds too good to be true, there are a couple of drawbacks. 
Electric cars are a scary prospect to some people because of their low range and the availability of charging points. While a big diesel car won't leave you with much range anxiety, there won't be many places to fill up with HVO. Of the 92,000 fuel stations in Europe, only 600 of them currently offer this fancy vegetable oil. Fortunately, HVO can be mixed with regular diesel, but you might be in for a long journey to fill up if you want to reduce your emissions. And you might be asking, how much does it all cost? Well, this is the other issue. A renewable fuel is great, but if it costs the earth to fill up, then most people will be put off. Although we couldn't find a solid price per litre or gallon, HVO is usually around 10 to 15% more expensive than regular fossil fuels. So for it to be adopted on a larger scale, the number of places to fill up needs to increase and the price needs to drop. If you enjoyed this video, then you should check out this one on what might be BMW's greatest engine. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.